Hi, just want to show a little tip here that I use to uh, quantize instruments such as drums, especially in the case that um, the drums are really busy and kind of all over the place and we want to preserve some of the feel of the drums. So let me go ahead and play back what I've got here and you're going to hear it drifting all over the metronome. Okay, now hopefully you're not dealing with a drum track that is that bad. Um, I quickly just recorded this and let it be really sloppy, so it's pretty bad, and hopefully you'd have the option of getting a better take. But in the case that this is what you're left with and you want to get this tighter, um, here's the steps that I would take. So um, first of all, for me, um, I like to try to maintain... Um, beats one, two, three, four, um, as much as possible on the beats and kind of let everything in between the beats um, be more loose and free. So um, to do this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and I'm going to identify um, any of the downbeats. So um, here at the very beginning, I'm just going to start here with number one. Now, as I do this, I find it really helpful to have tab to transient on and, of course, to group your drums together. You see that I already have that already done. Um, so I just would tab to the first downbeat here. I'm going to press Command-I to identify beat, and I'm pressing the over arrow. Just going to press 1 to 0 it out so that I've identified this as the downbeat of beat 1. Okay, and that is going to be 2. Now, I like to um, have the grid showing quarter notes so that I can more easily see what I'm lining up to. So, so right here is beat three, and this is going to be beat four, beat one. So we'll quickly go through this. That's four. Now, here's an interesting thing. When you're doing these identify beats, um, something that you can do to save time, when you run into a situation like this where this is measure four, one. Um, now, we're dealing with small numbers here, but sometimes when you're later in a project, like you're on measure 23 or whatever, 24, and um, it just takes time sometimes to figure out, wait, this is the downbeat to what measure? So for me, I really, you'll notice I always change the second number because it'll zero out the last number. Now, in this case, changing this to four is obviously not going to be right because it is supposed to be the downbeat of measure four. And I've realized that if you press five and press enter, it's smart enough to know there's not a fifth beat in the measure, so it just automatically makes it one for the next measure. So I find that helpful. So we'll just keep going along here. Oh, and also what I'm doing, um, you probably notice I'm in, um, I am in slip mode, but you can be in a grid mode if you want. And to be able to, of course, click right before the transient, just hold down command. Um, and that'll let you click and it won't snap to the grid. Okay, so um, this is the downbeat. Whoops, that should be four. And this is the downbeat of one. Okay. And four. And this isn't too long. Whoops. Um, so it should be done here in just a sec.
let's see. Yeah, that should actually have been two. Okay. And one right there. Okay, so of course we have now mapped out the time changes so you can now see exactly what the drummer played. And of course it wasn't in time. <laughs> And so anyway, we are just going to come over here. We're going to enable elastic audio. And I'm going to use the rhythmic algorithm. And because I've already rendered this before, um, it quickly did that. But most of the time, you're going to see, all, of course, all the files kind of go offline for a minute. Um, and then once you have that, then make sure you make all of your tracks now tick-based. So I'm, I'm holding down Option-Shift. And I'm just going to switch it to tick based and they should all be there. So now I should just be able to come along here. And actually, I like to switch to tempo events for my meter when I'm working with this. So, I mean, here, really, if, if you wanted to keep it as natural as possible, you could just go and look for some of the peaks and dips and just kind of straighten things out a little bit. So this would be one way you can kind of straighten the time. And you can see as I'm doing this that it's um, making the drummer play more consistent. But in this case, I'm just going to be extreme and just put them right in time. So I'm going to erase all of these. Um, and in fact, I'm even going to identify 120. Now let's go ahead and listen to it now. And you'll hear that, I mean, because it was recorded pretty sloppy to begin with, that we won't be 100% there, but we're going to be a lot closer now. So let's play this back. Okay, so it's at least sticking with the click really well. Um, there's a few places where I still would say the fill just isn't quite right. Like on some of these areas, especially this first measure. So we may want to break this grid up a little bit more. And we could pull up our quantize menu and, of course, you know, set something to help it quantize a little bit. And we can just select sections now because basically what we've done already is... Um, Pro Tools, when I straightened out the meter, already put um, the, the markers throughout the material so that I can now quantize just little tiny sections that need it without worrying about it shifting the audio to the left and the right of what I'm editing. So. so some of these areas we may just want a little bit tighter. And there, those doubles and the kick are a little closed. Definitely don't want to quantize that. A little weird there. And again, this can be all to whatever your taste is, whatever you want to do. Now, right here is an interesting point. If we zoom in, you'll see that we actually aren't moving the right thing here. So... Maybe erase that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just erase this marker here. Okay, so two more places I'd say here. Make that a little bit tighter. And of course you could just move notes by hand at that point if you wanted to as well. And then this really bugs me. Okay, so let me just play back one more time. Okay, so still a little weird right in here. And it is this guy. Okay, one other thing too to note here with using Elastic Audio, um, one little trick that I've done that I think works great, um, sometimes if the drummer's playing a lot of cymbals, you'll notice that um, the cymbals 
um, have some artifacts in them in the overhead microphones and room microphones that just doesn't sound very good. So what I'll often do is I will just put the overheads and the room microphones in the polyphonic mode and all the close microphones in the rhythmic mode. And for me, that sounds great. I don't notice, I haven't noticed any phasiness or anything by having different algorithms with them. And it's been a way to get a more natural sound that way. And um, if the drums are pretty tight, I find that sometimes even just using the polyphonic mode um, sounds better to me than the rhythmic mode. But the rhythmic mode definitely works best when you're um, moving the drums significant distance is to lock in the time. So anyway, hope that helps. Take care.